Cheryl Robinson learned to be competitive at a young age. My mother would take me to practice and um, I would have to use my allowance money and so she's told me that if in fact I bowled over my average then I wouldn't have to pay for the game. Cheryl got to keep a lot of her allowance money. It looks good. She's got it. That's a beautiful shot. As her average grew, so did her accolades. She was California Junior Bowler of the Year at 17, and the following year was named the Alberta E. Crow Star of Tomorrow. It was early, but it was time to turn pro. I was 17 and a half. I had to get a parent's consent from my mother to be able to go out on the women's tour at that time. I was serious about my bowling. It was. Um, enjoyable for me to do and um, the competitive, I thrived on the competitiveness, that's what I loved. I definitely had tunnel vision out there. The light at the end of that tunnel came in 1972. Cheryl broke through for her first LPBT title at the Ebonite Open. The hard work was paying off. It was amazing, I just, uh, it was nice that I looked up to a lot of the bowlers that were out there and um, to be a part of it was um, a dream come true. For a while, she was bowling's it girl, gracing the cover of the tour yearbook and popping up on network television. And I'd like you to meet my partner, one of the leading money winners on the ladies' bowling tour, delightful, pretty, bright lady, Cheryl Kaminsky. Thank you very much, Jed. Today, our stars will be bowling on the best ball system, hoping to win for themselves and for some lucky members in our studio audience who have a chance to win some exciting prizes. Good. Cheryl would win several local and state tournaments, a women's championships all events crown, seven worldwide women professional bowlers events, and three more tour titles along the way, including the prestigious AMF Grand Prix. And those who were there remember Cheryl as a force to be reckoned with. Great bowling ability. Um, she competed at a very high level. She inspired a lot of youth like myself. She's somebody who I admired, you know, as a youth bowler and wanted to be like. Just a great bowler overall. Cheryl was one of those people that everybody liked. She was cute, she was personable. She had that, that appearance that everybody wanted to see. Her ability then put her over the top. Cheryl says her real bowling prize came in the form of her husband, Jay a successful pro bowler in his own right, and her true lasting legacy from the sport. I think our goals were the same. Family life was very, very important. I wanted to travel. I wanted to get married and have kids and live happily ever after. And so through bowling, I, I look at my family, and that's what matters the most. You know, kids, the family, my husband. I mean, it's for our life. Bowling's for life. Even after retiring from the pro game, Cheryl's life centered around the lanes. As a longtime staff member for AMF, she stayed close to the game that gave her so much. Bringing business into the bowling center and also um, doing learn to bowls, teaching people learn to bowl better, um, and just bringing awareness to the sport. So I think um, after I had my first child, that was important to me to kind of give back a little bit of what I had been given from so many. And now as the Hall of Fame comes calling, Cheryl says her bowling memories almost mean more now than ever. Spins it in. You can see that one coming all the way. And that call took her completely by surprise. I said, is this for real? Is this a joke? It was just totally unexpected and I'm just so honored and I'm just so thankful that, that they think enough of me and they didn't forget me.